of an unprivileged bill. Yesterday, Justice V. Ram Kumar, an eminent lawyer, uh, an eminent judge and a resource person, because for a, normally we feel always it's a lawyer, as it, and normally we always feel that after the retire, after demitting the office, one becomes a lawyer. I'm a lawyer as well as judge. <laughs> Both. Uh, and uh, the mode of proof of an unprivileged bill, like yesterday he explained what is the difference between a privileged bill in respect of the soldiers, etc. And today we will be taking 32 questions which we have done. Uh, we have shared it with the group and are taking perspectives forward. And today we have Mr. Uh, KVJ Rao, who will, we will request Mr. KVJ Rao to introduce Justice Ram Kumar. And as usual, he will also take these certain questions with us. Over to you, Rao, sir. I mean, uh, Justice Ram Kumar needs no introduction. Like saying anything uh, about Justice Ram Kumar is like showing the candle to the wind. He is master of all. And uh, criminal law, I think, has been his passion. So he mostly speaks about criminal law dispassionately and he imparts knowledge to so many of us and we are really thankful to him for, for the effort that he puts in to come and impart knowledge to all of us. With that short introduction, I'll hand over the thing back to Vikas. Thanks, Vikas. Yeah. Since we had 18 questions yesterday, we will take from 19, but before that, as usual, we will ask just Ram Kumar to give a slight backdrop uh, we what we had discussed yesterday and then we can take the questions forward. Okay. Thank you, Vigas. Thank you, Mr. Rao. Good evening, friends. Yesterday, we have seen that unlike in the case of other compulsorily attestable documents, uh, the word execution in, in the case of a will not only takes, takes in the, the actual act of signing, but also attestation. Whereas in, in all other cases, compulsorily attestable documents, instruments of transfer covered by the Transfer of Property Act, execution and attestation are two different things. But in at Section 63 of the Indian Succession Act is clear enough to show that the word execution takes in attestation also. We, I also referred, referred to Babu Singh versus Ram Sahai, AR 2008 Supreme Court 2485, while interpreting a will the learned judges held that for the purpose of attestation, you have to look to Section 3 of the Transfer of Property Act. I, with due respect, I, I beg to disagree because attestation is, is there in Section 63 itself. You don't have to go to Transfer of Property Act. Transfer of Property Act does not take in will. Will is not an instrument of transfer. It is not an instrument of transfer inter vivos. Therefore, uh, to that extent, that decision may not be laying down the correct law. But of course, wordings are same. Attestation in Section 3 of the TP Act and attestation in Section 63, Clause C of Indian Succession Act are the same. We, uh, today, we, we, yesterday, we considered the question of execution. What exactly is an execution? What all things have to be there? Today, we pass on to the uh, matter of proof. It is not enough that a will is duly executed. A duly executed will may not be under, uh, um, upheld by the court if due, if it is not duly proved. A duly executed will, if not duly proved, the, the propounder may lose the case. Therefore, it is a proof of a will before a court of law is as important as due execution of the will. We, are, we yesterday also noticed that unlike in the case of other documents, in the case of, in the case of a will, there is no, no departure. Uh, the main part of Section 68 of the Indian Evidence Act, that at least one attesting witness shall be called for proving due execution, due attestation, is a requirement, uh, compulsory requirement in the case of a will. Whereas in the other case of documents, if a compulsorily attestable document, if registered, this requirement is not there. But in the case of a will, the law does not make any exception. At least one attesting witness should be 
examined to prove due execution. Otherwise, the propounder will have difficulty. The the now we pass on to the question for today on proof. On oh, the screen, we have also Professor Dr. Mohan. Uh, ah, Mohan Bolla, yes. Mohan Bolla, yeah. Now, now yesterday somebody asked me the the page page number of 1949 Bombay. The yes. Justice M C Chagla's decision. 1949 Bombay two double six. Of course, we will be referring to that decision today. Today also we will be referring to that. No need to take down. 1949 Bombay two double six. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, Professor Mohan, you have the questions. Uh, I don't have, sir. He he doesn't have. No, not, because not I not share sure. it in the group. I thought we would be having it. I will share it with them. Yeah, please. Uh, so the nineteenth question is: uh, since we had done eighteenth uh, till yesterday, is an attesting witness examined in court for proving due execution and attestation of a will obliged to prove due attestation by the other attesting witnesses or witnesses in all cases? This is a very very tricky area. In fact, uh, the the case law on this point is not very very much helpful because it is slightly misleading. Misleading in the sense that. all those judges who decided those cases they had uh, wills before them where the uh, the attesting witnesses were simultaneously present they see law requires that at least two two or more attesting witnesses should be there and for proof at least one of them should be examined for execution for attestation at least two or more attestors should be there and for proving the due execution at least one of those attesting witnesses should be examined That is section 68 of the Evidence Act, whereas under section 63 of the Indian Succession Act, at least two or more attestors should be there. Now, what, what in May, I will give you the citation in all those uh, citations, including 1949 Bombay 266, the, the leading case, where also they held that since both the 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 attestor who was examined to prove due execution of the will could not prove. the exec the attestation by the other attesting witness therefore they said that the will has not been duly proved however they they said that as a court of conscience we will not allow the intentions of the testator the desire of the testator to to be defeated therefore we will give the propounder one more opportunity and the matter was remanded otherwise it is a beautiful decision not otherwise the beautiful decision i proceed on the assumption that both the attestors were present simultaneously at the time of execution that could be the reason why such an observation and uh, remand was made in that case I mean, all other de decisions are following this including 1959 supreme court the leading case so therefore uh, see unlike uh, other documents execution includes attestation and uh, under section 63 now we will read section 63 can any one of you read section 63 So what can be done is uh, I will try to share 63 in the screen itself. Meanwhile, okay. we can take the uh, second part, or if you want, I can read that. Oh no, not necessary. I will read uh, clause C. Clause C of section 63 says, "The will shall be attested by two or more witnesses, each of whom has seen the testator sign or affix his mark to the will, or has seen some other person sign the will in the presence and." by the direction of the testator or has received from the testator a personal acknowledgement of his signature or mark or the signature of such other person and each of the witnesses shall sign the will in the presence of the testator but it shall not be necessary for that more than one witness be present at the same time and no particular form of attestation shall be necessary we have seen yesterday that the execution of the will signing of the will by the testator can we he can sign he can put his own signature he can request somebody else to put his signature or the the testator can himself put a mark he can either sign the will or put a mark but both signature or the mark should be put at the appropriate place to make it to make it uh, discernible that he is signing a will understanding the prescriptions under the will if if it is put at the proper place at the appropriate place cites the whether it is signature or mark it is valid then in the case of if he is not able to sign or put a mark 
he can request another person to sign the will on his behalf or if the the attestors are not there then he can after executing the will approach an attester and say and make an acknowledgement that is the earlier part of section 63 he can acknowledge to the attester that this is the will executed by me it contains my signature this is my signature i know the the prescriptions under the will i know the bequest made there under now you i am requesting you to put your signature as an attester if the at that person puts his signature in the presence of the testator it is a valid attestation though as per the earlier part of clause c the te- the attester should uh, should sign in the presence of the testator signing and attester should sign see the testator signing usually in all other documents execution is witnessed by the attester attester is exa- is uh, put for witnessing the execution here also that is the rule the attester is called for witnessing the execution execution is signing or putting the mark or requesting somebody else to to sign the document but in the case of a will there is an exception that instead of the attester seeing the executed the the testator signing or putting his mark or requesting somebody else to put his mark the attest the attester can accept an acknowledgement from the testator the attesting witness can take an acknowledgement from the testator that this is his duly executed will the signature contained therein is his own signature in that case even without the testator signing the will the attester can put his signature that that is why it it, it shall not be necessary that more than one witness be present at the same time and no particular form of attestation shall be necessary at a time one witness alone is, need be necessary now uh, i i had given you a chart yesterday the chart as it, it is bisect the entire section 63 is bisected and shown is two two separate compartment compartment one is regarding execution compartment one two is regarding attestation so attestation means uh, one, two or more witnesses each of whom has seen the testator sign first part or seen the testator affix his mark or seen some other person sign the will on the request and direction of the testator or received from the testator a personal acknowledgement regarding his signature or received from the testator a personal acknowledgement regarding the testator's mark if he has put a mark only or received from the testator a personal acknowledgement of the signature of the other person yesterday i gave you a problem that some other person had put his mark on the request of the testator the other person did not sign but put a mark only and uh, uh, that person went to a, a an attester and told the attester that this is my mark please uh, sign as an attester no it is not for him to acknowledge the signature acknowledge execution it is for the testator to acknowledge execution uh, even even where a somebody some other person has signed on behalf of the testator it is not for that other person signatory to acknowledge his signature it is for the testator to acknowledge that this signature is the signature of such and such person who has signed the uh, d- document on my request then he and each of the witnesses shall sign in the presence of the testator this test attestor should each of them two or more each of them should sign in the presence of the testator then contains the other rider but it shall not be necessary that more than one person shall be present at the same time now the citations which i am presently going to give you were all uh, presumably cases where both the attestors were simultaneously present and that is why in cases where one attester was not able to say that the other attester also signed in his presence the court said that it is not valid attestation 
because if both are simultaneously present naturally when one attester attests attest the will he will naturally see the other attester also uh, the 49 bombay is vishnu ramkrishna vani versus natu vittal vani ar 1949 bombay 266 then janki narayan boyer versus narayan namdeo kadam ar 2003 supreme court 761 again sri devi versus jairaj shetty ar 2005 supreme court 780 again uh, niranjan umash umesh chandra joshi versus mrudula joshi rao ar 2007 supreme court 614 again benga behra versus braja kishor nanda ar 2007 supreme court 1975 am i going fast mr vikas no no not really sir you're okay, okay. then then rur singh versus bachan kaur 2009 volume 11 scc page 1 again uh, 2009 volume 4 scc 780 three judges three judges then devasi kutti versus valsala vishalakshi amma 2010 k uh, k c 6233 that is a kerala decision probably you have closed your video your face is not coming forth oh that is not not deliberately done automatically some mistake accident is it okay yeah yes yes you were on uh, 2010 khc sir so my doubt yes that is 2010 that is a kerala decision yes. all following the earlier decision 2010 khc 6233 6233 again uh, supreme court year 1994 i am sorry it is again kerala then uh, my doubt is when witnesses more, more than two witnesses are not present simultaneously can the court can the court say that due execution has not been proved because both the one witness who was examined who was summoned for proving due execution did not say that he has seen the other witness also signing in all these cases they said that the other the witness has been closed that's not my making some yeah oh. i don't know why i don't know today it's a time and again getting this way maybe nobody wants to see my face no problem <laughs> yes so uh, now i will i will demonstrate my theory by saying that in one particular case we have one in fact even that uh, uma devi nambiyar versus tc siddhan aya 2004 supreme court 1772 both the witnesses were not present in fact one of the attester was i uh, was eh? again it is yes sir i know like you let me call my expert <laughs> uh, in fact in in uma devi nambiyar 2004 supreme court 1772 uh, also edike edike adu podu video ende video enna kaanando thanna tha onnum cheyade Uh, again ar 2019 supreme court ar 2019 supreme court 5682 5682 uh, where the testator went to the attesting witnesses individually with his own signed will and read it out to them and personally and personally acknowledged his signature after which each of the witnesses affixed his signature at different points of time at different places so bring out held that it is it is valid attestation it is valid attestation was the was what the supreme court said so Sir, what you, can be done is once you log out and then log in because again that video is uh, switching off log out is to log in yeah.
Yes, sir, you can unmute yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Now let us see. <laughs> so, so the, the this uh, distinction should be borne in mind by everyone dealing with a will. For, for, for proving a will, it is only when the, both the attestors are simultaneously present at the time of execution of the will, need they uh, depose before court that while he was signing or while he was attesting, the, he saw the other attester also signing the uh, will as a, as a witness to execution. Otherwise, it may not be the correct position in law. Yes, we pass on to question number 20. Uh -huh. Yeah, Prasad? Yeah. Is it not the propounder of a will exempted from proving due execution of the will in a case where the opposite party, far from making a specific denial of execution of the will in his pleadings, has instead admitted the will and his only defense is that it is a mutual will? As I already told you, in the case of a will, the law does not uh, give any relaxation at all. Proof as required by Section 68 of the Evidence Act is a must. And uh, notwithstanding that, there is a, a, a confession or admission by the opposite party. Notwithstanding the admission by the opposite party, a will shall not be used as evidence. That's what the section says. 63, 60, uh, section 68 of the Evidence Act also shall not be used as evidence until due execution of the will as prescribed under Section 63 of the Indian Succession Act in accordance with the mandate of Section 68 of the Evidence Act has been proved, has been established. The, the leading case on the point is H. Venkatachala Iyengar. H. Venkatachala Iyengar versus B. N. Timma Jamma. A year 1959, Supreme Court 443. In fact, this decision all, lays down almost all the important aspects of execution, etc. Every, almost every aspect. Only one aspect which requires clarification is what I said about 49 Bombay. That is, they also say that the attester who is examined, who is called to the court for proving due attestation, should also depose that he has seen the other attester attesting the witness. That may be necessary only where both are simultaneously present, not otherwise. Is my, my take on that. Then other decisions are SR Srinivasa versus Padma Amma, 2010, Volume 5, SEC 274. 2010, Volume 5, SEC 274. Now we have we have, uh, in fact, uh, a, uh, a division bench of the Kerala High Court in AIR 1990 Kerala 226, AIR 1990 Kerala 226, consisting of two eminent judges, Justice K.S. Paripurnan and Justice T.L. Vishwanath Iyer. Both were eminent judges. Both of them held, the, there is a verdict by these judges that if the opposite party admits execution of the will, then the rigor of section 68 need not be followed. Because an admit, they put it under section 58 of the Evidence Act. An admitted fact need not be proved. When a fact is admitted, why should you prove it? That was the, the reasoning. That decision held the field for several years in Kerala. <laughs> but uh, in fact, I also followed that decision in one case. 2009 KHC 636, etc. But uh, then, uh, in the light of the uh, subsequent rulings of the Supreme Court, and even, even the even 1959 Supreme Court 443 is a leading decision on that point. Uh, then again, the it was held that uh, that view is not correct, is Perun because 
a will can be proved only in the manner special special procedure prescribed by section 68 of the evidence act not in any other form not to standing the fact that it is admitted by the opposite party yes because the under section 58 also even when there is an admission an admitted fact need not be proved even when there is an admission court can call upon the opposite party to prove the, prove it therefore that is why the that decision was has not been now followed question 21 yes sir uh, can the scribe of the will play the part of an attesting witness ordinarily no ordinarily a scribe is called only for writing the document he is a document writer basically he is only the scribe of the document he is called only for writing the document so therefore ordinarily a scribe cannot be called as an attest it cannot be um, cannot play the part of an attesting witness uh, i have got uh, one uh, calcutta two calcutta decisions uh, one calcutta decision a year 1929 calcutta 1 2 supreme court also in uh, a person who put, who had put his name under the word scribe was not an attesting witness he had specifically written in the document i am the scribe and putting my signature as in my capacity as scribe he cannot be called an attesting witness and uh, he can he, he cannot he can be called only for proving his signature as a scribe not any other purpose that is what the supreme court also said in ar 2001 supreme court 2802 ar 2001 supreme court 2802 again in srinivasa versus padmavadamma 2010 volume 5 sec 274 but we have a different view of the same supreme court if the scribe has also attested the will with the requisite animo attest and d with the requisite animo attest and d that is with the requisite intention to attest the will he has also attest, attested the will in that capacity as well then even though he may be a scribe also he can be uh, treated as an attesting witness as well if his signature is also in the for in in the in the um, in, in, in of, the list of witnesses not only that in the document he has signed not only as a scribe but also as an attesting witness with the requisite intention to to that is why animo attest and the intention to attest with that he has signed he, in a, in an appropriate case scribe can also figure as an attesting witness the citation is A year 2006 Supreme Court 786. A year 2006 Supreme Court 786. Probably both the attesting witnesses might have been uh, dead. So <laughs> in that case, probably I don't know. Uh, then, then, sir, then the sir at this juncture, is there not scope for manipulation? And uh, he, he himself is a scribe, and he would be acting in other capacity as. No. Witness, no, if, at the at the place where the attesting witness is to sign, there's a place meant for that. If if his signature figures there in the document, nothing wrong, nothing wrong. If the scribe, see, there's no legal bar against a scribe figuring as an attesting witness. But when ordinarily, when you call a call him a scribe, his job is to um, transcribe right. the document. That's all. He is a document writer basically. but he can also figure as an attesting witness no legal bar yes uh, that is what the uh, kerala high court also held that there is no legal bar he can he can be uh, if is if he has affixed his signature as a token of uh, attestation having witnessed execution of the will by the testator uh, 2015 3klt 740 division bench kerala Ravindran C G versus C G Gobi, 2015-3 K L T 740. We'll pass on to question number 22. There is not a will void if a legatee under the will figures as a testing witness to the will. There is a popular misconception that if a legatee figures as a as an attester, 
is an attested dog because he is a beneficiary under the will he is a beneficiary under the will he is the the holder of a bequest yes there is a bequest in his favor if he figures as an attestee as an attester uh, the, the the it will vitiate the entire dog we know it is not so the the his bequest alone will be vitiated by virtue of section 67 the bequest in his favor will be vitiated that will not vitiate the will as a whole section 67 of the succession act is very clear now pausing here let me pose a question out of the box see we have seen that the will should be attested by two or more attesting witnesses and that is what section 63 of the succession act says but then section 68 of the evidence act says while proving a will at least one of the attesting witnesses should be called for proving the will now supposing in a case there were two attesting witnesses and uh, one alone and both are alive one alone is called and if that one person either denies execution or is unable to recollect whether he had attested the will then can 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 the uh, propounder rely on section 71 see so of the evidence act please take indian evidence act section 71 proof when attesting witness denies the execution if the attesting witness denies or does not recollect the execution of the document its execution may be proved by other evidence by other evidence this other evidence has been interpreted to mean a person who is conversant with this uh, signature or his handwriting can be examined by uh, recourse to section 47 or if such a person is not there his admitted signature or handwriting can be produced in court and sent to an expert for comparison under section 45 of the evidence act this is other evidence but then if the other attesting witness is also alive then you cannot have recourse to section 71 by by, by because there is other other attesting witness alive but the propounder is not calling him instead he wants to prove is when the the only attesting witness was called for proving execution he he denies or he does not remember in such case he the propounder cannot examine a person who is who is conversant with the signature etc that is not the other evidence uh, um, envisaged by section 71 that is what the supreme court held in janki narayan versus narayan nam namal namal namdev Janki Narayan vs. Narayan Namdevo, 2003, Volume 2, SEC 91. 2003, Volume 2, SEC 91. If the other attesting witness is alive, he should call that witness. That should be the mode of proof. Don't resort to Section 71 of the Evidence Act. It's only because I omitted to frame a question, direct question on this. That is why this. Yes, <laughs> sir. Sir, one small doubt. Yes, yes. actually a, a mother of two sons she write she writes a will and uh, the the legatees uh, the sons are the legatees and uh, uh, the wives of that and the, the daughters in law are the witnesses okay what will be the status of that uh, will? that will not be shared that will not be shared the attestation uh, uh, are they minors they are, are they minors are no, minors they are not, not minors they are, okay. they are major adults. wives adults okay, okay. They, they are daughters in law they are, they are also the beneficiaries they have different legal status yeah <laughs> you particularly in present day times yeah. they are different legal entities of course even <laughs> from the beginning but nowadays they will not acknowledge uh, to be known after their husband only <laughs> <laughs> that's correct <laughs> yes uh 23 Then 2023 would it make shall sure, i yes. yeah please oh. please sir would it make any difference if the legatee instead of figuring as an attesting witness has put his signature on the will in token of his consent to its execution see a legatee cannot be an attester if he is an attester it will not vitiate the will deed but it will vitiate his bequest 
it will uh, uh, he will be um, geopart is the, the big question in his favor will go, we'll go therefore yes. in, in a in a particular case privy council salvaged the document by, by saying that his signature is not as a as an attester the legatee signature occurring in the document is not as an attester but only um, uh, in, in favor uh, it is a uh, in such, uh, the the yes put his signature as a token of his consent Hmm. The Privy, Privy Council held that he has put his signature only as a token of his consent to the execution. He is not uh, he is not attesting the document. In such a case, the bar under Section 67 of the Indian Succession Act will not apply. Therefore, the big quest in his favour will not fail. Oh, Shyam Sundar Singh versus Jagannath Singh. A.R. nineteen twenty seven Privy Council two four eight two four eight. In fact, this was uh, uh, faithfully followed by the Kerala High Court, a division bench of the Kerala High Court. Also, in A.R. two thousand seven Kerala, page seventy seven, two thousand seven Kerala, page seventy seven. So, if he has not signed, if the legatee has not signed as an attester, but only in as a consent to, he is having witnessed the execution. Please consent. Then that will not vitiate the big question in his favor. <laughs> courts are always courts <laughs> find out some ways and means to salvage a a big question because otherwise maybe it is ignorantly done or unknowingly done. The person the the proper the person who advised them who did not uh, properly advise them. But for that ignorance, the uh, the big question should not fail. Okay. Okay. Question twenty four. Are not the requirements of Section 63 of the Indian Succession Act 1925 satisfied, where at the time of registering the will, the endorsement made by the sub registrar is to the effect that the executant testator admitted execution of the will, and the sub registrar signs below the endorsement besides two witnesses. In fact, the earlier view of the Supreme Court was that it, no answer was an emphatic no, because sub registrar is is not. attesting an execution of a will of course he has got a statutory duty of asking the executor namely the testator whether this is a will executed by whether you executed this document and he will say yes this is the document executed by by him then two witnesses sign there not as attestors they sign there as identifying witness witness in the sub registrar's office the two witnesses who sign are not attesting his signature or execution of the will they are signing only as identifying witness as identifying that this is the person referred to in the document i we know him please registrar please sub registrar please register the document because we know him he is the person referred to in the document we are identifying him before you the sub registrar need not know any each and every person yes. coming up for registration that is the purpose for the, those witnesses to signing that document therefore that is why very correctly supreme court held in ar 1955 supreme court 346 ar 1955 supreme court 346 again 1994 volume 5 scc 135 volume 1994 volume 5 scc 135 again A. R. Two thousand four, Supreme Court four three six. Again, A. R. Nineteen ninety, Supreme Court eighteen eighty eight, where they beautifully said, "Sub registrar cannot be a statutory attesting witness. <laughs> <laughs> he is not a statutory attesting witness." But ah, uh, because again the 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 uh, because they also said that. He is uh, the sub registrar is not attesting the the execution of the will, and he is not doing it anymore attestandi. He is not doing it anymore attestandi with the requisite intention to attest the document. It is not in that capacity that he is signing the document. But in Pendakota Satya Narayana versus Pendakota Sita Ratnam to A. R. Two thousand five Supreme Court four three six two. it was held that endorsement by the sub registrar that the executant had acknowledged before the sub registrar due execution of the will amounts to attestation 
where the attesting witnesses having been dead mm. so that is the case where the attesting witnesses were dead then the the propounder should have resorted to section 71 other by other mode section 47 is there section 45 is there instead of that the sub register was summoned and supreme court uh, in that decision held that both the attesting witnesses are there therefore the requirements of section 69 of the evidence act which allows proof when no attesting witness can be found and due execution of the will was proved by the sub register again same view taken by supreme court in 2014 2014 15th scc 578 2014 volume 15 scc 578 i have my own reservations about these rulings because the purpose of the sub register is not at all for due execution due attestation of a document he nobody is executing any will before him the executant is only of course uh, for attesting for attesting a document the execute it is enough that the testator either signs the he signs before the testator or he gets an acknowledgement of his signature from the testator but then only then only there's only one witness one witness in the form of sub register two more two or more witnesses are the requirement of law so in that view also you can't say that the will is duly executed duly attested then on the question of burden of proof we pass on to question number 25 so the question of proving a will ordinarily arises before which court ordinarily before a civil court in a civil litigation or before a testamentary court yes question 26 mon sir what is the nature of the burden of proof on the propounder of a will that is a very important uh, subject when the will is propounded by any of the parties to a litigation the burden to prove the same is always on the propounder who who is setting up the will who is setting up the will and claiming rights there under the burden is on him the burden becomes heavier if the executor of the will is surrounded by suspicious circumstances like the dispositions contained therein appearing to be unnatural or improbable or unfair or such that it gives rise to an indication that the will was not the result of the testator's free will or volition or where the alleged signature of the testator appearing on the document is shaky and doubtful or where the propounder of the will taking a prominent role in the execution of the will which confers substantial benefit to him he is fetching the the attester he is fetching even sub register is brought to the home etc all uh, arrangements are done all conveniences are done uh, he is uh, behind that because he is getting substantial benefit under the will in, when in such circumstances also then where importunity where the the execution of the will by the testator is a result of importunity that is persistent to the point of res- uh, annoyance he is persisting the testator to the point of annoyance ultimately unable to bear his uh, importunity the testator unwillingly signs puts his signature these are all circumstances which show that there are suspicious circumstances these are all circumstances which arouse the suspicion of a court in such circumstances court would ordinarily be reluctant to treat the document as the last will executed by the person with the requisite testamentary capacity he should have the requisite testamentary capacity that is it should be signed by so first of all it should be the last will and testament, testament and signed by a person with the requisite uh, testamentary capacity a person with a sound disposing state of mind he should be a person of sound disposing state of mind supposing he was afflicted by cancer and in a in a in a um, terminal stage and if his signature appears in a document that to very shaky and not at the exact proper place the exact situs these are all suspicious circumstances which the court may ask the propounder to 
clear. The founder will have to clear all those suspicions in the mind of the court. H. Vengarajala Iyengar vs. B. N. Thimajamma, A. year 1949, 1959. A. year 1959, Supreme Court, 443, is the leading case by three judges. It contains almost every aspect of the execution and, and uh, proof of a will. Yes, question number 27. Rao, is sir? There, yeah. Is there any difference in the burden of proof if vitiating circumstances like undue influence, fraud, misrepresentation, coercion, collusion, etc. are alleged by those attacking the execution of the will? See, supposing there is a suit for partition. And one of the defendants come up with a uh, uh, bill, with a bill saying that you know the property is not partible. As per the will executed by our father, this property was given to me exclusively. All the these properties were given to me. You have no right over the property. So I this is a testamentary succession in my favor only. You won't get any property. That is his contention. Then the others say no, no. This document, this uh, execution of the will is uh, vitiated by undue influence, fraud, misrepresentation, coercion, collusion, etc., which are the known defenses under the civil law. If such a contention is raised by the opposite party who is attacking the execution of the will, then indirectly he is admitting the execution of the will. He is oh. indirectly admitting the execution of the will. And he says that the execution is vitiated by these vitiating circumstances. Then the burden, beautifully stated in Vengadadila Yengar versus Timajama, then the burden is not on the propounder. The burden is on those who attack the execution of the will on these grounds because signature is there. Uh, nothing, no, no other suspicious circumstance. But then they, 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 they attack the document by saying that we wish it by undue influence. The, you, you had unduly influenced him, his mind, or fraud. You were in a position to dominate his will. So you have unduly influenced him. Or fraud has been practiced on him to make it appear that he is signing a, 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 some other consent document, etc. Or collusion, coercion. If the coercion means... You, he, he has been made to uh, put his signature under duress. So coercion. These are all the, then you are admitting his signature. He executed is there. Then if you are attacking the execution on these grounds, the burden is on those persons attacking the document on these grounds. Beautifully stated by three judges. Vengadajala Yengar versus Jama, A.R. 1959 Supreme Court 443. Then followed by Surendra Pal versus Dr. Mrs. Saraswati Arora, A.R. 1974, Supreme Court, 1999. 1999, three judges. Daulat Ram versus Sho Shoba, A.R. 2005, Supreme Court, 233. Again, again, Meenakshi Amal versus Chandra Shagaran, A.R. 2005, Supreme Court, 52. Any number of rulings. To, to quote a recent one, a year 2020 Supreme Court, 2614. Kavita Kanwar versus Pamela Mehta. A year 2020 Supreme Court, 2614. Yes. Question 28. Uh, uh, I think that in the question 27, when you say that it is only the dispute is not quasi will, it is under circumstances. I think this will help a lot of, I, I think that it will help a lot of professionals to understand that. Correct. That it but, then, about... but then if there are suspicious circumstances, it is for the propounder to clear the judicial mind of the court. When there are suspicious circumstances like the signature being shaky or unnatural, unfair, etc. But then if there is there is no suspicious circumstance, or if the suspicious circumstances have been properly explained away by the uh, propounder. But on the contrary, uh, uh, the, the execution of the will is attacked by the opposite party by saying that, no, no, it has been executed by practicing fraud, undue influence, fraud, uh, coercion, etc. Then you are indirectly admitting execution. Therefore, 
burden is on you to prove that the execution is vitiated by these vitiating circumstances no i am saying no i am saying that uh, it will help the Correct. out of doubt in the minds of the professional uh, that Correct. is a lawyer Correct. understand that the dispute is not qua the will the, he, the now the onus is qua the circumstances yes onus is shifted to the onus attacker to the attacker yeah. so <laughs> the dispute is not that there is the, uh, there does not exist a will but yes. he has to demolish that case that it was because of the circumstances yes. that you have beautifully explained i think that lot of Thank you. lawyers Thank would you. Uh, understand yes. needless question to say that it's not that this question was explained beautifully your all questions <laughs> are explained very beautifully but i'm saying this is a very uh this is the difference between a ordinary and extraordinary lawyer would be that this extra knowledge within which will probably go probably i have that judicial perspective also apart from the lawyer's perspective i have the judicial perspective also how a judge would look at the position probably that 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 my experience counts probably i don't know that sure, that sure. you are saying probably but that is the reason that you are so popular yes <laughs> yes uh, Uh, professor mon 28 yes. question 28 he is not the execution of the will for the sole benefit of one of the sons of the testator excluding all other children by itself a sus- suspicious circumstance this is an aspect on which we have some divergence of judicial opinion at this level of supreme court there are four sons yes three all the three son all the among the four sons one son is the sole legatee the testator has preferred only one son he has disinherited all the three other three sons he was loving them equally oh this are this may be the evidence adduce in a case okay. the, the, the disinherited sons will be will be uh, arguing through their lawyer that we were the some evidence will be um, extracted from the witnesses to say that father loved all the sons equally but then why why discriminate why these are all the usual thing. but then one aspect to be noted is if the father wanted to give the properties to sons equally why should he execute a will oh. the natural law of inheritance will take place take effect the natural law of inheritance will take effect if the very purpose of executing a will is to disturb the natural succession oh <laughs> this is well a, this is a new this is all together a new view new point uh, that is that no, is it's not my it's not my <laughs> no. view point not my view point in fact way back in 1969 two scwr it's a, it is not reported in air scc or criminal law journal etc to 1969 volume 2 scwr supreme court weekly reports 605 chukka reddy lechem versus lechem reddy okay that they they, they they said that when the uh, natural order of succession when the natural order of succession itself has been um, dis- disturbed disturbed that itself is a suspicious circumstance this is what the supreme court said oh. so subsequent subsequent rulings of the supreme court did not approve this view because the very purpose of executing a will is to disturb the natural order of succession mm-hmm. you want to prefer somebody in in preference to somebody else it is you the want... wish of the, it is the wish of the will maker what you wants to do exactly which is proper. exactly exactly and that cannot be called into question as you long as it's that, yeah as exactly. long as it is the same mind yes correct so veda mitra verma versus dharam dio verma 2014 15 scc 578 so to 2014 volume 15 scc 578 um so held that it is not a suspicious circumstance but the other decision 692 scwr 605 held that that by itself is a suspicious circumstance oh. but mind you mind you even though it is that by itself is not a suspicious circumstance okay. but that coupled with other circumstances can be can be a ground for um, uh, the court to think that there are there are some suspicious circumstances the the natural order of succession disturbed and there are other vitiating circumstances or other disturbing circumstances which may disturb the mind of the court because the unless the propounder is able to clear the conscience of the court 
he cannot win he cannot succeed therefore court may be in in a, in a dilemma why did this person prefer one person when when the evidence seems to the effect that he was loving all children alike and he had not provided for the other three why provide for one child alone one son alone that may be the the way in which the mind of the court working but there might be evidence to show that this person is uh, is having no no avocation no fund is uh, i'm virtually living in abject poverty etc that might have um, more the mind of the testator to make a preference to make a uh, preference in favor of that son all these circumstances will have to be shown so so i will say that natural order of violating or disturbing the natural order of succession by itself is not a suspicious circumstance that coupled with others may be a suspicious circumstance which the propounder will have to clear will have to explain will have to explain but that by its actually i i read a case where uh, all the all the sons Hmm. they are living elsewhere in america and uh, other foreign countries and there is somebody uh, uh, a stranger actually hmm. uh, a distant relative who was with the uh, father of those uh, people and uh, he was given the entire property uh-huh. uh, willed away by will yes. and that that when the when the uh, sons challenge challenge uh, yes. yeah uh, the, the supreme court uh, this is a supreme court decision as i remember and uh, uh, it has been uh, the execution has been uh, okayed by the court uh, or approved by the court i see okay yeah, that, that's so so my maybe the testator thought that all all of them are well placed they are well placed and this person who has been looking after him yeah. during his old age and my, he deserves my, uh, maybe that may be is that that should be properly reflected in the evidence adduced by the propounder yeah in which case the court will be inclined to uh, justify the will accept the will yes question 29 is it not correct to say that when by the will the natural order of succession to the testator is disturbed by creating legacies in favor of the propounder or beneficiary the burden is heavy on the propounder to remove the above suspicious circumstances of unfair disposition of property under the will uh, see that by itself is not a, a vitiating circumstance or a suspicious circumstance but that coupled with other circumstances will certainly loom large in the mind of the court an unfair disposition of property or an unjust exclusion of legal heirs particularly the descendants is regarded as a suspicious circumstance one of the suspicious circumstances kavita kanwar versus pamela mehta kavita kanwar versus pamela mehta ar 2020 yes. uh, 2614 supreme court 2614 yes. uh, 69 supreme court the wording i will tell you i'll the exact wording i will say 692 ac wr 605 uh, they say that when the nat- the very fact that natural order succession has been disturbed is by itself a suspicious circumstance that we cannot agree in fact in that uh, uma devi nambiyar which i gave you the, the citation which i gave you yesterday to the ay 2004 supreme court 1772 justice arijit pasai has beautifully explained the uh, every the ins- a, a to z of will executing and attestation etc there his lordship also says when the, the very purpose of executing a will is to disturb the natural order of succession otherwise why execute a will leave it to the uh, law of inheritance which the parties are governed so good yeah. in fact there is a constitutional bench ruling there is a constitutional bench ruling ar 1964 supreme court 529 which many of the subsequent rulings did not uh, notice ar 1964 supreme court 529 five judges that is uh, shashi kumar banerji versus subodh kumar banerji wherein the the observation is reads thus if the propounder succeeds in removing suspicious circumstances the court would grant probate even if the will might be unnatural and might cut off wholly or in part near relations oh 
Holy or in part, near relation. Even though he can disinherit all his children and give it to somebody else. There should be valid explanation, that's all. So this is, a, this is an observation by a constitution bench. In fact, 69, 69 SEWR is contrary to this observation. And Uma Devi Nambiar was a TC Siddhan, year 2004, Supreme Court 1772. Justice Arjit Pasai has beautifully explained that. A will is executed to alter the ordinary mode of succession. And by the very nature of things, it is bound to result in either reducing or depriving the share of natural heirs. If a person intends his property to pass to his natural heirs, there is no necessity at all for executing a will. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Question number 30. So what technicalities are raised for receiving a will? Is the court expected to act as a court of conscience? Yes. Conscience. Yes. The court is expected to, uh, to act as a court of conscience while dealing with a will. Because a person, if you are able to show that it is the last will and testament of a person and... Uh, uh, he was of, of a sound disposing state of mind when he executed the will, then his intentions should not be defeated by some interpretation given by the court. Court should uh, enter the armchair of the testator, should uh, uh, get into the armchair of the testator and think that is what the courts have held. Therefore, the, the, uh, in Vishnu Ramakrishna Vani versus Natu Vittal Vani, AR 1949, Bombay, 266, Justice M.C. Chagla. The other judge was also equally great judge, Gajendra Gadkar. We are dealing with the case of a will and we must approach the problem as a court of conscience. It is for us to be satisfied whether the document put forward as the last will and testament of Ganga Bai. That's why Ganga Bai was the testatrix in that case. Court says, they say that we should be satisfied. This is the last will of, and the testament of Ganga Bai. If we find that the wishes of the testatrix are likely to be defeated or thwarted merely by reason of want of some technicality, we as a court of conscience would not permit such a thing to happen. We have not heard Mr. Counsel on the other point, but assuming that Ganga Bai had a sound, sound and disposing state of mind mm -hmm. and that she wanted to dispose of her property, as she in fact has done, the mere fact that the propounders of the will were negligent or grossly negligent in, in not complying with the requirements of Section 63 of the Indian Succession Act in proving the will, they ought to have that should not deter us from calling the necessary evidence in order to satisfy ourselves whether the will was duly executed or not. After holding so, they, in fact, that, there is, that is where I, I had one aspect of this judgment. I have some, some reservation. That is, probably, presumably, both the attesting witnesses were simultaneously present in that case. That is why the only attesting witness who was called for proving due execution could not or did not say that I have seen the attestation by the other attester also. Invariably, that, will, that is the usual practice. Both the attesters will be present. So, the, the, this attesting witness did not prove that. So, they, the judicial budget through Justice M.C. Chagla hold that the propounder was grossly negligent in not proving the ingredients of the section. Therefore, that will not, that should not defeat the wishes of the testator. Therefore, they called for a finding from the lower court. And uh, I don't know what happened thereafter. Probably the will might have been upheld. Because that was, they had already uh, given their mind. Okay. Now, this is the principle which you find in Section 87 of the Indian Succession Act. Section 87 of the Indian Succession Act reads, Test testator's intention to be effectuated as far as possible. The intention of the testator shall not be set aside because it cannot take effect to the full extent, but effect is to be given to it as far as possible. That should be the endeavor of every court dealing with a will. So, 
instead of straight away discarding the will as not properly proved the bench called for a finding from the lower court yes we pass on to yeah. question number 31 what that is meant the by the claim what you had said but, you can explain that but you had already explained that armchair rule of interpretation yes that question but, is no, where where did we come across this principle who who That's laid down the who proposed the, it yes the armchair rule was originally set out in boys versus cook boys versus cook 1880 14 chancery chancery division 53 where the high court of judges of england and wales stated that the court may place itself in the testator's armchair and consider the circumstances and consider the and uh, the circumstances by which he was surrounded when he made his will to assist the court in arriving at his intention this is the, um, the, the this was first propounded by the high court of uh, England and Wales. The above rule, which is reflected in Section 87 of the Act, Indian Succession Act, was followed by the Supreme Court of India in Vengada Jala Iyengar v. Timajama, A.R. 1959, Supreme Court 443, three judges. That's why I said that this 59 decision is a, is an encyclopedia uh, regarding the law pertaining to wills. What is the citation? I will post it in the group. It's the A.R. 1959 Supreme Court 443. Three judges. Vengadajala Iyengar. Well, Vengadajala Iyengar. Uh, H. Vengadajala Iyengar. If you, if you look at the, uh, the uh, digest, you will not find this decision because you will have to find for H. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's <laughs> Only if you locate H, you can find this decision. If you go for uh, Vengadajala Iyengar, you won't find this. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> that is the problem with our... Uh, <laughs> I just digest yes. people. Nowadays it is online, so it's not all that difficult. <laughs> uh, then it was followed in several other rulings of the Supreme Court. That is uh, uh, <clears throat> 2009 11 SEC 33. 2009 volume 11 SEC 33. Again, um, there are other Kerala decisions also. Then yesterday, one doubt was raised by somebody, I don't remember who, that when there is a registered will, I am not dealing with the revocation of will, which is covered by Section 70 of the Indian Succession Act. Somebody asked a question, when there is a registered will, can it be revoked by an unregistered will? Yes. It can be. It can be. Yes. Yes. Uh, because for revoking a registered yes. will, you don't require an a registered will itself. Hmm. Because registration itself is optional not compulsory yes. in the case of a will. Therefore, and the Section 70, if you read Section 70 of the Indian Succession Act pertaining to cancellation of uh, the revocation of will, the no unprivileged will or codicil nor any part thereof shall be revoked otherwise than by marriage. This is not the Revocation by marriage is not applicable to Hindus, uh, Buddhists, Sikhs and Jainas because of the exclusion under Schedule 3, right with Section 57 of the Act. Yesterday I, I had uh, articulated on that aspect because under Section 69 of the Succession Act, if a testator after having executed a will marries, that itself uh, uh, revokes the will under Section 69. But that is applicable only to Indian Christians. Okay. Not, not to Hindus, Buddhists, Sikhs, or Jainas. Why, why sir? Why, why, sir? I, I'm getting a doubt. This is specifically excluded under Section 57, read with uh, uh, Schedule 3 of the Act. You please look into Schedule 3. I will take you to Schedule 3. Third Schedule. Third Schedule gives which all sections, which all sections in Part 6 of the Indian Succession Act are applicable to Hindus, Buddhists, Sikhs and Jainas. In, in those sections, 69 is conspicuously absent. 69 is the section which uh, invalidates a will on account of marriage of the testator. Then, uh, therefore, I will give a citation of the Kerala High Court 
that a, 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 even if an unregistered will has been executed it can be revoked by because the wording of section 17 see wording of section 70 70 no unprivileged will or codicil nor any part thereof shall be revoked otherwise than by marriage that is not applicable for hindu sikhs and buddhists or by another will so it can no um, another will or codicil or by some writing declaring intent it can be revoked only by another will or some writing or declaring his intention because it should have the, all the attributes of a will uh, but there is some misconception that if it is a registered will it can be revoked only by a registered another registered will no it can be revoked by another will or some writing saying that because it is an ambulatory document we saw yesterday a will is an ambulatory document the the testator has got the right to change it at any time before his death that is why it is called an ambulatory document so therefore he, he should have that right he should be able to exercise that right at any time just because he has executed a registered will should not stand in the way of his exercising this right of ambulation so the chronology of the will will prove itself if it is after the registered will then that will stand otherwise also that is why we it is time, time tested yeah. correct that is why we discussed registered section 88 Section yes. 88 of the uh, Succession Act says, supposing there is a subsequent will is executed, it automatically revokes the earlier will. Likewise, in the same will, if there are two inconsistent clauses, inconsistent clauses, one destroying the other, one di- diametrically opposite to the other, the last one will prevail in the case of a will. Whereas in the case of all other transfers, all other documents, the first one will prevail. Oh. but in the case of a will the last one will prevail because of the ambulatory nature of a will the section itself says section 88 then i i i will give a citation that for revoking a registered will another registered will is not necessary but a, an unregistered will a, but only should, thing is there should be a written will or a written document to revoke a will the recent citation of the kerala high court baby mall Vargis, Baby Mall Vargis versus P. S. Jacob, 2019, two K H C, two K H K H C one double seven, by Justice Swamirajan, who is a sitting judge of the Kerala. Then somebody asked me some words, some that is not uh, on 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 in our topic, but then if you want to know, the Indian Christians are exempted, Muslims are exempted from. from applying for probate etc because the exemption part 6 does not apply to them that is why yesterday i told you in the case of muslims they can execute an oral will only other person other than a muslim who can execute an oral will is a, a privileged will a privileged will executed by a person who a bar a person who is an actual soldier soldier in, engaged in actual warfare etc such persons alone can execute a privileged will they there it need not be document written doc, written will can be oral will also otherwise all other unprivileged wills should be in writing another reason for saying that is that how will you prove section 63 the requirements of section 63 if it is oral for proving section 63 it should be written somebody executing the will testator executing the will putting his signature or mark to the will or asking somebody to put his signature for and on behalf of the testator or etc so or a testator acknowledging his signature to a an attester and getting the signature of the attester in, in his presence that is attestation one of the modes of attestation these are all this all will be impossible if it is an oral will in the case of christians also they 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 were not exempted from uh, obtaining a probate but then uh, in 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 for the sake of for the entire ari kerala territory an amendment was brought to the indian succession act indian succession act kerala amendment uh, 2000 that is 1996 with effect from 14 3 19 97 uh indian christians in kerala were exempted from 
for um, executing a, for asking for a probate of a bill subsequently the central legislature also stepped in the indian succession amendment act of 2002 by which to, with the effect from 27 5 in the entire country all indian christians in the entire country are now uh, need not uh, apply for probate for for a will and the distinction between probate and letters of administration is in the a probate can be applied for only if you are the testator is appointed an executor if the testator has appointed an executor under the will you can you cannot apply for letters of administration you can only apply for a probate otherwise you can apply for a letters of administration either with the will annexed or without the will annexed oh. both are permissible under the act Anyway, we are not going into those aspects. I am not straying into those objects which are beyond our topic, <laughs> outside our topic. So grateful, sir. It's uh, it's. Thank you. Thank you. The listeners are chinna samseya. <laughs> there is no scope for any samseya. Okay. Uh, I I I usually uh, tell them. If you have no doubts, that means you have not understood anything, two, or you have things, understood everything. Two things, everything you understood. Here the reverse of here. Everything. Here the latter part is true, sir. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> anyway, this is a confirmed criminal straying into civil law. That how is, far? <laughs> how far he has succeeded for you to dis- judge? <laughs> the criminal mind is the most devious one, so you would be thinking of the right <laughs> point, not the wrong point. So we have to look at it from that aspect. So grateful, sir. So grateful, Very sir. Like we it. are immensely indebted, and uh, there is a lot of take home today Thank you. Thank you. and even yesterday. But uh, I I could not completely Thank attend you. that yesterday Thank session. I, I was just watching, and uh, I earnestly request uh, honourable sir to uh, share the platform with us in Christ Jayanti College in Nyaya oh. Sambada. Oh. Oh, may it sure. be a criminal sure. or a civil thing and <laughs> i request uh, vikas chatra sir to share the number of honorable uh, <laughs> sir i don't know why sham badman is uh, not present he would have he is a sham badman and mr kv j rao are usual um, attendees yes, yes. <laughs> they don't we fail are, they we are never addicted fail. we are addicted to the <laughs> south <laughs> indian culture <laughs> they are all assimilated for having the criminal side of yours <laughs> yes, true. I see. True, true. But today you have not seen that. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Uh, they are used to that. You should come with a criminal bent of mind. <laughs> so this is by Amrita Das. Does the will have a limitation period? But does the will have a limitation period? Yes. If you want to apply for probate or letters of administration, there is no period of limitation prescribed by the uh, Limitation Act. Therefore. Courts have taken the view that the residuary clause under the Limitation Act, the last article, will govern. Therefore, within three years of uh, the will, but very often you, the party may not be knowing whether a will has been executed or not. So, three years from the date of knowledge can be safely applied. Oh, there's a ruling of the Supreme Court also. If you want, I will give you the citation. One second. Sorry, I don't have right now. Right okay, now. Then, uh, there is a there is a question. Can a minor sign as attested witness? This I think. Uh, as I answered answer. yesterday. Yes. I answered yes. yesterday because okay. a minor can be a witness. A minor, can, if a minor can be a witness, competent witness, uh, why not he, uh, he figure as an attester? But only thing is, he may not be able to prove due attestation, prove due execution. Because he, uh, I, of course, he is a competent witness within the meaning of Section 118 of the Indian Evidence Act. Only thing is, before uh, examining a minor, the court should uh, 
conduct a, 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 a what, what do you what do you call a what is that expression nature there is a and, nature and consequences of the acts he, yeah, he yes, that under the under the under the oath sac it is a wire dire examination oh okay. there should be a wire dire that's a french word okay meaning to speak the truth it is unlike, unlike the usual words it is not latin it's a french word which means to speak the truth therefore the court will have to ascertain whether this witness is have, as having the testi- testimonial competence testimonial competence that is the, the the ability to speak the truth when then the oath will be administered only if the witness child witness is about 12 if 12 or above if it is below 12 both will be administered only if the court finds that after co- wire dire examination court finds that the witness not only knows the duty of speaking the truth but also the nature of oath nature of oath is if he does not speak the truth he will be held up for perjury that the witness should know the consequence of not speaking the truth the nature of oath if the witness knows even though below 12 years then the court will um, administer oath otherwise below 12 no oath is to be administered about 12 invariably oath is to be administered and no oath is to be administered to an accused person unless he is in the witness box as a defense witness because of section 42 of the oath sack 1969 there is another question a relation to testator can be a witness to the will the freely the freely but he should not be a legatee <laughs> exactly that's it then 67 will will catch him section 67 of the succession act will catch him <laughs> when a daughter is collecting jewelry from bank locker according to the will should it be in front of other lrs siblings etc that's all practical practical yeah, questions some practical question yes because ordinarily no if she is the legatee in respect of the jewelry if she is the legatee in respect of the jewelry yes she need not uh, obtain need not obtain the consent of anybody else that's correct so the last question will be uh, how can the legatee pro- prove the oral slash privilege will legatee yeah oral wills we have not come across <laughs> to be frank hmm? because that is something pronounced orally by a, a say a, a, a jawan on the war front may be made to another friend who he may be at the at the verge of dying anticipating Im- imminent death he may say that this is my last will wish please convey it to my wife and children family so that is only by word of mouth so uh, it does not require all the ingredients of the sections i gave you yesterday section 74 or 70 etc oral will prove it in fact this is a very elaborate subject the testamentary disposition is a very elaborate subject there are how many there are very many types of wills about 12 types of wills there are 12 types of wills if you if you want me to scare you i can give you the i can give you the <laughs> names duplicate will okay. double will double will holograph will in the own handwriting of the testator okay. joint will mutual will mm, in fact uh, um, decisions uh, then uh, mystic will mystic will non cooperative will pre nuptial will pre nuptial post nuptial will parliamentary will unprivileged will which we we very often come across privileged will 12 types of wills are there we have taken all the questions sir and yes yeah uh, thank you sir it was a pleasure as usual you. hearing the insights from you and that's what ravi kajar also endorses he says your lectures are so good to hear and he thank says you. thank you thank you
and it's always a pleasure hearing and i can say that since we have started first time on the civil side civil of your sessions gradually people will understand that you are the you are just like a coin uh, two sides of the same coin and both have the equal value to be enjoyed for all times to come but both cannot see each other one cannot see each other they, they cannot they cannot see each other but each they other. coexist together yeah there are two sides of the same coin of the law so we have to learn to live with it yeah though no, very, of, very often bench and the bar are said to be two coin sides of the same coin when there is a rider they cannot see each other <laughs> no no they, they say the judge who gives the relief is uh, is always seen to be the best <laughs> i i used to say is a one judicial officer once said with every judgment a judge gets one sure enemy oh <laughs> the one who who who, is, who lose, loses and a doubtful friend okay the person who wins before you need not necessarily be your friend the count the advocate may say oh it is not because of the merit of the judge we my we argument. won the case yeah. my argument <laughs> <laughs> that's correct that's correct so uh, thank you sir it's yeah. always a pleasure connecting with you we will keep on sharing the platform with yeah. likes of professor mohan kvg rao prem <laughs> sham and all other participants who are watching us those who have missed the web, uh, webinar they can always like share subscribe to our channel and they can have the earlier sessions also of justice ramkumar along with the speaker thank you